e-cigarettes seem to be everywhere nowadays. Invented by a Chinese pharmacist and patented in 2004, they first went on sale in 2010 and are now the most popular way to quit smoking in the UK. But although there's no smoke, there's certainly a fire of controversy around e-cigs, as I found out when I spoke to Linda Bold, professor of health policy at the University of Stirling, who chaired a panel discussion about e-cigarettes at this week's NCRI cancer conference. Well, there's a lot of controversy, and part of the、um, confusion about e-cigarettes is about the role of nicotine, so the mechanism of what are, what's in an e-cigarette. And of course, nicotine is the addictive substance in tobacco, but it's the it's the tar that kills people. It's the 4,000 other chemicals that are in tobacco that are harmful and cause cancer. So, in an e-cigarette, you have nicotine, you have other things like propylene glycol, you have some toxicants, but they're at far lower levels than in tobacco. But Confused people, including in the media, is the fact that we've、uh, aligned tobacco with nicotine, and we've begun to believe that nicotine is an e- is evil or is a bad thing. But actually, we you know we have nicotine replacement therapy, and that's what we use to help people stop smoking. So you're absolutely right that e-cigarettes could be a really promising way、um, way out of tobacco use. But we also have to be aware that there are things in them which, we, for example, wouldn't want somebody who's never smoked to start using on a regular basis. What are some of the questions about e-cigarettes that we need answers to, and how are people trying to find some of those answers? So the big questions are on use, <clears throat> on safety, and on smoking cessation. So in terms of use, who is using e-cigarettes? And the big question there is: Are they being used by smokers, or are they being used by people who've never used tobacco? And the answer to that question we sort of already have in many developed countries, in particular. We know that the vast majority of e-cigarette users are either current smokers who are trying to cut down or stop, or they're ex-smokers. Who may have used an e-cigarette to stop? We know that amongst people who've never used tobacco, less than one percent of people who are using an e-cigarette are never smokers. So we can be relatively confident about that. In terms of safety, we have lots of unanswered questions. So that we know in the short term they are safer than tobacco. They don't expose people to those tobacco-specific nitrosamines, which are the things that cause cancer. But we also know there are things like some metals. Any cigarettes, and we have to be careful about that. So, and the other really important unanswered question is, what are the longer-term implications of e-cigarette use? Inhalation of propylene glycol, for instance, and flavorings into the lungs. So, those are questions. And then the final one is, do they help people stop smoking? And do they? I mean, I see so many people <coughs> going around, and so many of my friends seem to be using them. So, if you look at randomized control trials, we actually only have two high-quality trials, and they show that e-cigarettes are about as, as successful for stopping smoking. As a nicotine product, nicotine patch, so kind of medium success. We have some observational studies where they follow people up through time, and we know they're about 60% more、um, effective for helping people stop smoking than using just willpower or buying nicotine replacement therapy over the counter instead of on prescription. So I would see them at the moment as a medium level successful smoking cessation aid. But I guess the key thing to emphasise is the technology is changing all the time. There is a session this afternoon about e-cigarettes that's going to be looking at all these kind of questions and the research that's going on. What do you see as the future? How can this research be used to try and shape? How people might be able to use them, and, and the sort of regulations that might need to be imposed on them. So the session is definitely going to highlight clearly the current evidence around safety and efficacy for smoking cessation, and hopefully give people more confidence that they are promising, and take away some of the the kind of heat from the debate and shed more light, if that makes sense. But I think potentially advocates of e-cigarettes would say that they have huge potential to actually transform the landscape of tobacco use across the globe, if if they're allowed to be used by. People who need to stop smoking and find them helpful. The downside is we also have a lot of regulation. Regulation that is in place in some countries, like Brazil and Argentina, have banned e-cigarettes. So we have a very variable picture across the world. And in Europe next year, the Tobacco Products Directive will put quite strict regulations on e-cigarettes. So for governments, it's challenging.、Uh, from a from a research perspective, what I would say, as a researcher doing research on e-cigarettes, is let's let this technology potentially help people. Let's not overregulate so that we stifle the market. Because at the end of the day. You can still buy tobacco cigarettes almost everywhere, and we don't want to disadvantage people from using something that is a safer alternative. Linda Bold from the University of Stirling, speaking at the NCRI Cancer Conference.